So welcome to our review of Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, the remaster. We played it, <laughs> we finished it, yes. we're here to review it. <laughs> and I first played this game 17 years ago, came out on the PS2, and I was quite excited. I was excited to play a mainline Shin Megami Tensei game because everybody kind of knows Persona yeah. and a lot of other games like, you know, Strange Journey and stuff like that. But they don't really know that Shin Megami Tensei is the mainline series. Mm -hmm. But Persona blew up and became so hugely popular that that's kind of like the mainline series to people now. Right. But in Japan, the series is absolutely huge. And this is the third one and came out, as I say, in 2004. And we got to play this remaster. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think so far? I thought it was great for a remaster. I think they did a really good job. I mean, you showed me some of the old stuff. Yes, versus yes. Versus the new, and you can really tell the difference. Yes, and we're gonna talk about a lot of those differences today. Uh, some of the highs of the game, some of yeah. the lows of the game. But overall, we like this style of yeah. game. We like RPGs, so if you're an RPG fan. <laughs> only a bit. Only a little bit. <laughs> there's something in here. And first of all, something that's new to this version of the game is voice acting. And there's voice acting, Japanese mm -hmm. and English, and I think the voice acting is absolutely Oh, fine. they did a really good job. Yeah, I think that's really uh, a good thing in this game. There's also a merciful uh, DLC that you can download to make the game a little bit easier. And I'm saying, I played the original game, it yeah. was very difficult. Oh, just a bit? <laughs> just, a little, just a little bit difficult. So that is something that is added into this version of the game. So to begin with, we'll start with the story. Uh, with no spoilers, we'll just say kind of what happens at the beginning of the game yeah. and how we kind of get into that. So it just starts off with your main character who has to go to the hospital to meet up with his teacher. That's right. And some of his classmates. Along the way, he meets somebody who gives him a magazine, which kind of starts the tone. Right. Of, of it because it's about the occult. So it right. kind of gives you like, hey, by the way, this isn't going to be a really good <laughs> good situation type things, game. <laughs> things, things, things are ominous. I, that's one thing to yeah. say is the game is very right? dark. Oh, very, gosh, very dark. Very dark. A lot of satanic themes. My high school art teacher would have would have hated this game. <laughs> he was a too satanic. It's way too satanic. But it, it was cool. So yeah. So you, you meet up with the guy who gives you that magazine. Says hey, some strange things are afoot. Yes. And then you head over to the hospital because you're looking for your teacher. You get in touch with your classmates. Decide decide to split up. Right. And once that happens. The world ends. The world ends and becomes a post-apocalyptic nightmare world. It definitely does. And you become a demon. Yes, or a demon fiend. A demon fiend. Yes. And yeah, so let's just talk about this character for mm. a second. Great character design, right? Oh my gosh, I really enjoy it. Yes. Except for one thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I couldn't like it was so silly, but I'm like, he has a horn coming out of his neck. At the back of his neck, and we were joking, we were playing on the couch, and we're like, man, that must really suck for sleeping. <laughs> like, how do you, you sleep know? at you night? You just sleep on your face the entire time. So silly, that... but that's, that's the first thought that we thought. Right, and uh, so that's like, the storyline, and then you're going through the, the world, yeah. and it's a, it's a post-apocalyptic world. It's kind of a, a theme of the entire series, Definitely. Uh, for sure. And you're go going around the world map, and you said that it kind of reminded you of something? Of the game of life? <laughs> Only because of the little... Like, the little curse icon. Yeah, it just reminded me that you're going around like yeah. that. I, it, silly little things I pick up, really. Yeah, and I'm going to get into the, all the graphics and all that about Later, the overworld yeah. in, in a, a bit and all that, but that's how it kind of starts, and uh, we'll get into the gameplay in a bit. So we'll go for graphics here. Looking at that overworld map, mm, yes. Wow, it is amazing. And, really and well Kim has said, like, like I showed her the original, and yes, this is a nice remaster. They've done a really good upgrade on the original graphics. The only thing that is hindered is some of these cinematics were pre-rendered back in the day, yeah. and so they've just kind of upscaled those mm -hmm. a little bit. So when the opening movie begins, when you first play the game, you're mm -hmm. like, oh. Oh, it, it's not as, imp as impressive of you, as you were hoping it yeah, to be. Yeah, when you told me it's a remaster, I'm like, are, are you sure? <laughs> you remember <laughs> like, Kim saying that to me at first, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't too sure. I know, and I'm like, no, no, it gets better, it'll get better, it yeah, will get and better. And it did get better. And what is pretty unique is that when yeah. it sometimes is like a cut scene, they'll show a bit of the old versus with the new. They'll mix it in together, right, which right. is really unique. Yeah, so so you do have the old uh, cut scenes in there with new uh, you know, versions of high-definition uh, 3D work that has been done. 
and running around the world. It is. It looks great. Mm -hmm. And I, this is coming from a person who was a fan of the original game. Yeah. So to have this now in 2021, I think it's pretty cool that they've re decided to remaster uh, it and revisit it. And they've given it a beautiful face uh, lift. And all of the graphics look really yeah. good. Like especially combat looks great. Oh, and yes. we'll get into combat in a bit. Uh, but all the graphics for that look awesome. The monsters look awesome. The characters look awesome. I'm very happy with the high definition upgrade to this game. So I think next what we'll talk about is the gameplay. Yes. And right away it's uh, turn based which yeah. is something that we're both quite used to. Turn-based <laughs> combat is, I, I, for sure, and especially 17 years ago, most games were turn-based combat, right, right? for sure. And what's good about this is that they also have auto. Yeah. So you can auto fight too. So if you're in like a battle that's kind of like, you know, you just want to get through it really fast, just click that auto button and Boom. get right through it. Yep. I do like that option myself. Yeah, <laughs> it, especially when you're doing combat after combat, I mean, for sure. And it's nice when you do get to weak enemies, you just go boom, boom, boom. Yep, it ends out. the battle so fast. Mm -hmm. They're not, you're not sitting there waiting. I love fast combat. Yep. Always like that. So a big thing that they have in this game is when you recruit other demons to be a part of your party. And what I like is that the demons in your party can do that for you. So you can seduce. Right. And you can persuade them to be a part. But what's so annoying is when you really want this demon yep. to be a part of your, your group, you give them the money, you give them the items, and and they're like, nah, I don't want to be a part of it. And then somebody comes in, I'm going to persuade them. Okay, fine. So you give them more money. Yeah. You give them more of your energy, everything, and he still leaves. Yes. So I'm like, come on, all that work for nothing. It's <laughs> funny. Kim, Kim uh, crowned it really great. She said, this game reminds me of like a dark Pokemon game. Oh, yeah, totally. I thought it was so fascinating. I never, I don't, it sounds so stupid. I'd never thought of it that way. Yeah. And yeah, you're going around the world, getting combat, and trying to get these uh, you know enemies to join you. Yes. And then they become a part of your, uh, your party, and then you're upgrading them, and they're uh, evolving yes. as well. And they, they, their physical appearances will change over yes. time. So, and yeah, then you can do the thing that you love the most. And I know you liked it in Persona, and you get to do it again here. Fuse the demons together. That's right. I love that. I could sit all day long just doing that. I think that's what I did for one hour of the day. I'm like, I'm just sitting there using away. Now, <laughs> now are you just, are you just guessing, saying, oh, you know, this enemy uh, might be good with this enemy and see what comes out of it? Pretty much. I mean, I did look up online, like, okay, is there like a chart? There's a chart and it's a pretty intense chart. Yes. So I just kind of said, you know what, I'm just going to keep going on my own yeah. to do what I want to do. And it's a lot of fun. But what I find is that in regards to Persona, it's more, like in Persona, it's way more gruesome because right. you got like the guillotine. Right. Whereas here, they're just up on a platform and they dissolve. They dissolve and this new energy. <laughs> and, they, and they merge together and that's yeah. it. I'm like, wow, well, okay, kind of sweet, kind of yeah. nice. And there's actually times where you could be um, bringing two together and you think you're going to get a demon, but you get something else completely. That yeah. has happened. I was very disappointed and very annoyed. And I, I got, you got to say, these designs are so oh. cool. Oh, definitely. I, I honestly think about Nocturne, what the, the main thing is, is it's all about the combat yeah. and the demons. Definitely. And recruiting the demons. This is the meat and potatoes of this game. And the designs, oh my god, are so gorgeous and so weird. So weird. And so twisted. Yep. And all that is just like, they're crazy. And that is where the addiction is, is in getting in combat and recruiting. And we only recruited even a, a small amount. Yeah, there's to, way more out there's there. There's way more. I mean, you can spend so much time. Just doing that. Doing that, so yeah, you can do a regular playthrough of the game and start up a brand new game and go through that again and try to recruit everybody and do everything that you want to do. I, I mean, you can spend a lot of time just, just <laughs> delving into that aspect alone. Yeah. Now, 17 years ago when this game came out, yes, it had cool graphics at the time, cool monsters, all that stuff, but the one thing that highlighted it beyond was the music. The music soundtrack in this game is awesome. It's a it's a mix between heavy metal yes. and death metal, oh, I love and it. and oh my god, it has like church music going on yeah, in yeah. there, and it is crazy. Here's my favorite song. It's the battle music. Here's mine, the boss music. Oh, 
and I really love that boss music as well. When that kicks in, you know stuff is going down tonight. <laughs> it is crazy. So Kim was the one who's mainly playing this game. I was sitting on the couch, we were working together on it. What are your thoughts on this game? What do you want to say about it? I mean, I, I thoroughly enjoy the game. It, of course, reminds me of Persona, but with all the extra day-to-day -day stuff, mm -hmm. you're mostly just fighting. Right. That's what you're doing in this game. The only issue I have with it is that it feels very barren mm. because it is a post-apocalyptic world. Yeah. And you are on your own. Like, every so often when you walk into a new area, you'll just see, like, a demon. Or a ghost. Or, or a ghost yeah. or a mannequin, and that's it. And you just feel so alone. And I've been a person who hates that type of feeling like when it comes to zombies stuff yeah. I'm just not a big fan of it right but other than that I really did like how your main character is a demon right I think that in itself is very unique it's the selling point it is yeah. interesting in recruiting other demons yes. and the combat the combat's really good the music's really good the world is weird it's a strange weird, weird, weird. world that they've created here and it does give you that isolated feeling yes. and I think it's supposed to and it's a little unnerving it's a little bit weird yeah. but man they've done a really good job remastering these graphics oh, yeah. for now yeah take it like looking at that old game to now it's like wow look at what they've done it's really nice and I'm really excited that a whole bunch of brand new players can try this out who've never played this game before and that I think that's what this is for and I think it's for fans of Persona that are looking for something a little bit different yeah something from the past to see what the mainline Shimigami Tensei games are all about mm -hmm. I can't believe we got this game this year. It's strange, it's weird, and I hope it sells well because I'd like to see like Digital Devil Saga in the future come out and stuff like that. And I still hope that we will get Shin Megami Tensei 5 this year. It was one of the first games announced for the Nintendo Switch back in the day. And it's supposed to come out this year. It's slated to. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. It's been in the works for like five plus years. It's like ridiculous. And I think we're a little warmed up and ready to go into the oh, yeah. game now. So guys, what are your thoughts on Shin Megami Tensei, the main series? Let us know down below. So anyways, guys, until next time.